In this video, I'm going to talk about importing a MASH, a stereolithography or STL file, and manipulating it with these solid tools in Fusion 360. So, the thing with Fusion 360, I, I think it's it's an engineering tool first, and then an artistic tool second. Granted, you can make some artistic stuff with Fusion 360, but I think a lot of the artistic tools are usually associated with other stuff like uh, 3ds Max, Blender, you know, those other you know mesh editing programs. Uh, so, so at least with this, you can use like <laughs> you know, engineering tools to modify meshes to an extent. Uh, there's a couple limitations to it, though. Uh, this does not like converting meshes with 10,000 triangles or more uh, to you know, a 3D solid like what you're used to making here. Uh, it could make, in my case, it makes Fusion 360 crash. I think those with a beefier computer might not crash, it might take a while. So it's it just doesn't play nice with that. If you're going to do anything with that, you're better off trying to learn the mesh tools here, which I really don't know much about any of these here. Um, or using a tool that specializes in meshes like Blender. So let's go ahead and bring in a mesh. I'm going to choose a simple one. So there's this mini turret that I found on Thingiverse. This is designed to go with uh, you know, uh, Transformers figures like the Titan size ones like Metroplex, Trypticon. It has a 5mm uh, stud right here so it can go in the holes, 5mm holes on all those uh, figures. So I just clicked on it. Right now, Atticad has, has asked me to position this wherever, you know, just like bring in any other models. I'm fine with it right here. Here's its unit type because meshes, they don't really hate, they're unitless. Uh, so this is where you can specify you know, its unit type, whether we're looking at the same millimeters, centimeters, meters, inches, feet, and so on. So I'm going to leave it in millimeters. And there's a, a couple other things I don't really mess with. I guess you can flip the up direction uh, and uh, then whatever is here you can reset it. Yeah, this these are just numerical dis you know, things. It's, it's just like moving anything else around. So I'm just going to click OK. Come back over here and now I want to convert this to a uh, 3D solid that we can use these tools with. So what I do is I go to Mesh, go under Modify, and click on Convert Mesh. And it's asked me to select the body or your mesh, so I'll select it. I leave the operation at parametric. I don't think there's really any difference between these other than uh, you know going to you know, how it's represented in the timeline. And then there's this method here this little logo here, I think this is behind a paywall. Yeah, it's behind a paywall. So this is your only thing right that you can do right here, unless you're paying for an actual subscription. So I'm going to click OK. And because there's so few triangles on this, it converts over just fine. So now you can see it's broken up to its triangles, but it's not really the case. You can actually get rid of all these triangles by just clicking on one, hitting delete. There you go. Now it's going to look like a regular you know, solid model. Just clean it up, select one, hit delete. Uh, all along here, there. This will not work for all surfaces. Like for example, if I try to delete one of these triangles back here, it's going to throw an error for me. Uh, compute failed, does this. So there's different ways to address these issues here uh, if you want to. So, I mean, I'm, I'm doing this assuming you want to manipulate this more reliably with the tools you have. Even along these bevels, or I guess they're chamfers. I know there's a difference between the two, but I can't recall off the top of my head. You yeah, know, you can clean those up too. Sometimes there's like really small triangles just to treat. Okay. Now, there's this thing. This is supposed to be a completely round peg. And when you print it, it does turn out nice and round, but this is what the printer sees in the mesh. So I'm going to clean this up. And actually, instead of just cleaning this all up, what you can do instead is actually make a sketch. It's 
from my solids. You can actually create a sketch here and make a 5 millimeter circle. might have to be 5.1 millimeters in diameter. That way you don't get any of these edges showing through to make this perfectly round for you to work on in Fusion 360. Uh, you know what, let's try that now. Let's make a sketch here on this. And yeah, flip it on side, but I'm not going to worry about messing with the views right now. I'm going to go up here and I'll find my midpoints, just, just hovering over a couple of sides because it's an even shape, and it'll snap right there. I'm going to make this. Let's make it 5.3. That'll encompass everything there. I'll finish sketch. Then what I'll do is I'll just extrude this. Make sure I cover up the whole thing. Extent type to object. And I'll just click on this face in here. And it's asked, it wants to cut, but I'm going to have it join because that way I can just fuse everything under there together. Okay. Now if I want to bring this down, back down to 5 millimeter diameter size like I want, then I can just make another sketch and find the center of my circle, type 5 millimeters diameter, hit finish sketch, and then just go back to the extrude bit here and go to object and have it just shave it down. There we go. That gets rid of all that messy, um, I guess, triangular uh, you know, stuff. So you have a nice 5 millimeter peg represented right here. Now, again, like I was showing you earlier, you know, sometimes you might not be able to delete all these faces. Sometimes it's just going to be a ton of work just to delete these all together. So if you don't like these cannons, you want to replace them with like different kind of cannons or something else. Um, it's, I think it's best to just wipe this clean. And you can wipe it clean with a uh, by just making a rectangle uh, sketch and just doing a cut. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a sketch on that side right there. Again, it's flipping the mid up. This is what I get for not saying my views, but it's okay. Whatever. Uh, let's do a two-point rectangle. I'll have it start there and go all the way over there. Yeah. I could get more sp I can get more exact if I want to. I can always adjust it. So I'll start with that. Click finish sketch. Now I'm going to do a cut. So I'm, to get rid of all this stuff here, I'm going to do it two sides. So we cut all that stuff out over there. Cut all this. It gave me an error for cutting over that way for some reason. I'm not sure why. Inconsistent graph vertices. Okay, interesting. There's probably going to be a way we can address that. So that got rid of a lot of stuff. There's this weird thing hanging out there, too. And I think what we need to do is we actually need to make this rectangle a bit bigger. So, you know, you can spend more time on, you know, act actually adjusting the size of this. But just for time's sake. I'm just going to draw a reg random rectangle, and I'm going to edit the feature and adjust my profile. Make this whole thing go away. Yeah. And that cleans all that junk right out and gives you a blank slate to turn this into a you know, missile launcher or a or a uh, some kind of auto cannon, maybe even a t-shirt cannon. You know, how about a titan sized t-shirt cannon? So those are just a, a couple ways for manipulating you know, meshes that you convert to these solids. And again, it's not really going to work very well if you try to convert like a uh, like a figure, like like a, a fancy miniature figurine or something to this. Otherwise, because like I said, if it's around 10,000 triangles or bigger and you try to convert it to a solid like this, there's a good chance that uh, Fusion 360 might completely crash or bog down. So those those are that, so that's basically how you can convert a mesh to one of these you know, solids. You can manipulate um, how you can you know, just a couple things to help clean things up. And 
and we'll be able to modify it with an engineering tool. Now, if you wanted to convert this back into a uh, mesh, so you could 3D print it, what you do here is you go to bodies where your body actually is. So here's the mini turret body. You right click on it and you click here in the menu, save as mesh. And it highlights it, uh, gives you a format. I always do STL binary. It works for me. Uh, I don't really know what the difference between the the ASCII and the binary ones are, but that's why I use. Uh, you can preview it and it'll actually calculate the number of triangles in it. Now, it's a little look kind of like you know, how you got it. Uh, there's a low refinement, like what we cleaned up, and then you know, there's the high. Just makes stuff look a lot nicer. And then there's some of these refinement options here too. If you want to mess with those, I don't mess with them. I just use one of the presets right here. And I leave this blank because I end up feeding this in through Kira. That's the slicer I use. Uh, then 3D print from there. So I click OK. Then I can just save this just like that. And I don't want to replace it, so I'll uh, just name it Mini Turret Blank. There we go. Blank mini turret. That's how you can make your STLs out of this. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please be sure to click the like and subscribe buttons below. Also, post any questions you have in the comments and I may answer them in another video. And remember, anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. So keep learning, keep designing, keep making, and be proud of your work.